and one, right? Hi, everyone. Welcome to Coach Munkin's weekly press conference here as we preview the Black Knights game against Abilene Christian here at Mikey Stadium on Saturday. Coach, if you want to start with an opening statement, and then we'll open it up to questions. Good afternoon. Uh, sure not as much fun to come in here after a, uh, after a loss. We're, we're disappointed that we weren't able to well, play well enough to, uh, to put ourselves in position to win the game on Saturday. I thought Cincinnati had a, a really physical football team, uh, obviously well coached. Their kids were prepared and, and, uh, and they did a really nice job. I was very pleased with our defense for most of the day. Um, we, uh, we, we got the, the, the turnover in the opening drive and then got a turnover shortly thereafter, uh, which put us in position and, and uh, obviously to take the lead right off the Right off the bat, it was a great start to the day. We just weren't able to capitalize on it. Uh, offensively, we we had some opportunities. Um, we got we got the ball in decent field position a couple of times, and and just weren't able to to, to finish drives. We got the ball down close and uh, had the one field goal. I thought it was a great kick by Sawyer's on the on the field goal. It was a a tough snap. Kind of got into the. The chest of Brooks Jose, who's the holder, he got it down. The kicker stayed with it. Really, a clutch field goal to bring us within a a, uh, a score. And uh, as 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 uh, poor production as we were having on offense, um, we were still in the game. And uh, we had a couple big plays that that we missed, and and that uh, I think probably could have made a difference to set up uh, an opportunity to be in a scoring position. But our guys played their butts off. They played really hard. Um, we just didn't sustain blocks on offense, and ultimately a couple of big plays on on busted assignments, busted coverages, cost us. They had the one big play that uh, that set them up in the first half uh, was a was a broken coverage, unfortunately, and then the second half they had a two play drive. They they leaked the back out of the backfield, and and uh, oh, we got to got to cover him, and you know it's just something we got to cover more with our team. And, uh, and be ready for those situations. So um, our guys battled. We lost to a really good football team. It doesn't make it feel any better, but, uh, but I'm encouraged, and, uh, and we're, we're going to work our very best this week to try to improve and play the best game we've played so far. Start with questions from Rich DeMarco. Hey, Coach. Um, just a question. What is the biggest thing things your team can learn from a game like Saturday, an experience, an outcome, what's the biggest things they could learn? There's lessons in, in, in a loss. I uh, heard Coach Saturnio say it yesterday that, that you can make the L a loss or a lesson, and uh, we just we got to we got to make it a lesson. And uh, and those things are to to make sure that we do not have uh, lapses in areas that we completely control. Which, uh, which starts with our assignment. And there were things on both sides of the ball and in special teams where we just we, we had some mix up on assignments or didn't, uh, didn't block the right guy or didn't cover the right guy or whatever it may be. And, 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 and against a really good football team like Cincinnati, we can't do those things. So I think it just, those are hard lessons to learn. And, uh, and hopefully, they sting enough that that we'll you know, we got to do a good job coaching our guys uh, and uh, on our players got to work really hard to learn their assignments. I've I've heard it said and and uh, and it, I believe it to be true. If uh, if a guy misses an assignment, either we're not coaching it well enough, we're making it too complicated, or 
that guy is, either isn't given an effort or isn't capable of learning. And uh, I think our guys are working hard and trying hard. I think they're all capable of learning it. And uh, so we've got to work hard to make sure it's it's not too complicated and we do a great job coaching it. And ultimately that's my responsibility. And uh, we're all responsible. That's not to take anything off anybody or put any more on anybody. Uh, it's just what we've got to do. So there's things we can control that we've got to focus uh, in on on more than – Maybe we had uh, even in the past blocking and sustaining blocks and getting off blocks and tackling. That's the name of the game. So we got to do those things better. And Jeff, we talk a lot about uh, the opportunity when you go on the road to Cincinnati and, and playing teams that are you know well known and, and are high in the rankings. Do you think about when Abilene Christian comes here how much of opportunity they're looking at it as coming up to West Point, the experience and taking on a team like this? Oh, I, I'm sure they see it as an opportunity, and, and we see it as an opportunity as well. Um, we're we're just so grateful to be playing this year with all that's going on to to have uh, this game scheduled, be able to play it at home, uh, and, and don't for one minute think that 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 we're not looking at them as uh, the same as we did any of the first three opponents we played. I, it doesn't matter to me what division they. They, they play in. They've got an athletic football team, and they've got a terrific football coach. Uh, you watch what, or, or you look at the record and see what, what uh, Coach Durrell accomplished at Northwest Missouri State, national championships and undefeated seasons. That guy knows what the heck he's doing, and, uh, and he's got a really talented, uh, capable football team. And if we don't play our best, they'll come in here and beat our butts. Uh, they they almost did that at UTEP a week ago, and and you can see their their schedule. They're playing Virginia at the end of the year. They're not afraid to take on anybody. So got a lot of guys that have transferred from from big time schools. Those guys have seen it before. They they played in big stadiums against big teams and you know bigger than us. I mean that that the team we played this past Saturday was physically bigger than we were, and uh, and there's teams bigger than them. So. Uh, these guys are accustomed to to playing teams like that, so I know they see it as an opportunity. I think they're probably a lot like us. They're glad to be playing and, and excited about football. Thanks, Coach. Next question from Ken Kreitzer. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Uh, just to ask you about when you watch the film of the Cincinnati game. Your defensive line uh, had the defensive had the goal line stand and limited. Cincinnati to 69 yards rushing. What what stood out to you and why they were able to uh, accomplish that on defense? I thought our guys played really, really hard. Uh, Coach Woody's doing a great job putting them in position. Our, our defensive staff, I think, is doing a really nice job. Um, they had uh, – Cincinnati had five yards on their final carry of the first half, which gave them six for the half. So they had rushed for, for six yards in the first half. And, uh, and I think that's, that's about as good a performance as you can ask for uh, as a rushing defense. And we, put, place, we place a lot of emphasis on being able to run the ball and stop the run. Uh, we feel like that's a formula for winning. And, uh, and I, I thought it was just a tremendous effort to, to stop Cincinnati on the, on the one yard line on fourth down after we had embarrassingly had a punt blocked, and uh, and they, they they that's a big play. They had the ball first and goal inside the ten uh, after the block punt, and and we went four downs in a row and stopped them. That's a that's a great effort. I hadn't seen a goal line stand like that since we were at Oklahoma two years ago. So uh, really proud of the effort there, and it kept us in the football game. And coach, you spoke about Abilene Christian's program. They have a new football stadium. They obviously invested in the program, and you mentioned uh, Coach Adam Durrell and his success at Northwest Missouri State. Uh, looks like a team that likes to throw the ball. Uh, a junior quarterback, Peyton Manfield. Tell us about what you see in Abilene Christian. Uh, just a super athletic football team, and and I watched them against UTEP, and we've watched some some film from them from the previous season. Uh, they got a very athletic football team, a lot of fast football players on their team. And, uh, and, and as you mentioned, clearly a, uh, a commitment to the program. That is a, a beautiful new stadium they've got there. And, and uh, it's, a, it's a tremendous uh, 
small university there and in, uh, in Texas and they, people take a lot of pride in football down there as you know so um, they've got a lot of good football players and uh, and a really good coach and a good staff so we we just got to be prepared for for what they've done and uh, and then really kind of speculate on some things what they will do they they uh, they're very aggressive in special teams uh, they, they faked a field goal last or two weeks ago when they played UTEP and uh, we're, we're very close to executing it so I mean we're we're preparing for every fake punt fake kick everything uh, onside kicks all of it we're just getting prepared for everything they might throw at us because it's it's uh you know it's clear that the they're 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 fine with doing that, and uh, and they did it in a very close football game, and a game that they they had a chance to win. Thank you, Coach. Next question from Charles Grievous. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Um, prior to and actually subsequent to the Cincinnati game, you talked about how fast and how big and physical a team they were. Um, you know, his coming out of such a game, it, it can take a toll on an opponent. Uh, without going into detail, overall, how did your team fare in that regard, especially with Saturday's game right around the corner? Well, I was pleased that uh, that we came out of it fairly healthy. And uh, you know, I, I think I think for everybody that watched on TV and, and had a chance to see it live, certainly I, I saw it up close. They, they were fast. They were physical. They got a lot of long body guys. Very impressed with with their team physically, um, but uh, but but you know, fortunately, we had some guys that got banged up and they got bumps and bruises that will take a, a couple three days to to heal up and and have them really feeling uh, like themselves again. But but other than that, I think in pretty good shape. We've still got some. We got some guys that have been sidelined with some injuries, and we're working really hard to try to get them back, and uh, and we'll do that this week. Probably the probably the worst injury the whole lot was Coach Vitti, but uh, he's fine too. And, and my follow up and final question is relative to linebacker John Madigan. Uh, he appears to get better uh, with each contest. I guess my proverbial question would be, where was Jr. last year, or is this just? His maturation as a ball player, where some players develop later than sooner. I I, th I think he's he's been a good football player for a couple of years. He's he played on a lot of special teams. If if you know, for those that that track those kinds of things, he he played on a lot of those teams, and and uh, we're very happy with with him as a player. Uh, he was also playing behind Eric Smith, who I also think is an outstanding football player. And Cole Christensen, who was a three-year starter, and it, it's really hard to beat out guys that have had experience, and uh, and so I think that's kind of where that left him. He was he was playing behind Cole, and now he's he's able to play alongside of of Eric. But uh, but I, I I think John's just having a great year and and uh, really uh, taking advantage of his opportunity to be a starter. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Ken Kreitzer, you have a follow-up about Coach Vitti. Uh, thank you. Yes, Coach, uh, uh, the situation with Mike Vitti was, all, was on social media yesterday. Is there anything more you can say, and how is he doing uh, off that, uh, that head bump that he, that he took? Mike, Mike's, Mike's in good shape. Uh, if you know Coach Vitti, he, uh, he, he was ready to go back in the game right away. So um, he... he well, you know, we we were we were finally getting something going on offense, and there was a break in the action, and the team came over to the sideline. I think, I, I, as I recall, I think they had called timeout, and our team came over. We were excited because we were moving the ball, and you know, Mike is a Mike's a, a fiery guy, and he really just went. He and Mike Johnson are cut from the same cloth. So those, my, Ken, you know those two guys very well because you, you're you're around Absolutely. here a lot, have a chance to talk to them, and um, so. He really just was going to kind of take his two hands and kind of pop Mike on the side of the head and say, "Yeah, good job." And 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 Mike, I think thought Mike Johnson, I think thought Coach Vitti was coming in for a chest bump or something like that, which Coach Vitti does too. And he kind of came forward with the chest bump, and the helmet went right to the to the forehead, and and it stunned Mike. I was standing right there with him, and and uh, kind of stood there with him, and I could tell he was hurting. And uh, and then he kind of came back around, and as soon as he came back around. 
he was right back in the game. He charged right back after those guys and said, yeah, come on, let's go. And uh, so that's just him. That's his personality. And uh, Tim Kelly, our trainer, was there. And before he could get to Mike, Mike was already back going with the guys and, you know, popping them on the shoulder pads and saying, let's go. And, and uh, I turned to Tim Kelly and I said, uh, he must be okay. And Tim said, just like he was when he was a player. So um, he, he's doing well. And uh, he, he's got a little, little battle scar there uh, to, uh, to show for it. But, but uh, we're, we're, we're glad Mike's all right. Yes, Mike's a great, great uh, veteran. I just wanted to ask a little bit about Jabari Bordeaux. Uh, you're trying to get him back in the lineup, and it seems like you've got quite a bit of depth that you can call on your defensive secondary. Uh, maybe a good uh, uh, comment on that. Um, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm really happy with the, uh, with the development of the group. There's a lot of inexperienced players back there. Uh, really, Jabari Moore isn't – I wouldn't call him a real experienced player. He uh, – he played a little bit last year as a freshman. Um, I had the had the fumble recovered for a touchdown against Tulane, but just just wasn't wasn't an all the time uh, starter or anything like that. Javari Bordeaux is the guy that's back there that's got a lot of experience. But uh, said Cunningham and and Chris Skyers, Markwell Broughton, uh, other guys are Isaiah Morris, Caleb John. Um, Oh, gosh, who else am I missing back there, Ken, that you're thinking about? I mean, that's just a bunch of guys that, that don't have. Chris uh, Chris, yeah, uh, who started. Duffy. Yeah, Ju- uh, Julian. So Julian's a guy, again, very little experience, but I think really talented. And uh, and we, we, we want to find ways to get him in the game more. We're playing him a lot on special teams. Um, so you know, there's there's some guys over there. I, I, I hope I didn't leave anybody out. But Chris got his first start of his career on Saturday. So really just very pleased with the, with how those guys have developed and the, and the job our coaches are doing to, to bring them along. Thank you, coach. Thanks, Ken. Next question from Ken McMillan. Hey, Jeff. Um, you touched on this with Rich earlier, but how do you teach your team about bouncing back from a loss from a mental standpoint? And is this team you've coached different with this approach? We'll find out if they're different. Uh, I, I hope they are. I, I, t- I told the guys in the locker room after the game, just I'm disappointed. I know you are too, but we can't allow uh, a, a loss, a disappointing loss to derail us and, uh, and take our, our, our focus away from being a good team. And it's – it's not about winning a certain game or winning a certain number of games. Uh, what's important is we try to maximize our potential, be the best team that we can be. And Cincinnati had a lot to do with that on Saturday, that we didn't play as well as we're capable of playing. But we played good people before. We played good teams before and played better than we did on Saturday. So that's what's disappointing. I don't feel like we maximized all we – all what we, we could be or what we could have been on Saturday. So hopefully we'll find a way to do that this Saturday. That's the challenge. From what you know about Abilene Christian, do you expect your fullback to be more active and successful this week? I, I don't know. That'll, that'll have to do with how well our guys do blocking them and how well they do getting off of blocks. But, uh, you know, the, the B-backs weren't very, very, very productive on Saturday. Um, and that 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 has uh, a lot to do with with just everybody that's out there and and getting movement and creating seams and and uh, and those guys powering through those seams and breaking tackles and we just we we've got to do a better job with all that coaching our guys so that they are prepared to do that and and giving them uh, giving them the putting them in positions giving them things that that uh, that they can run out there that that will be most uh, opportunistic. So um, I, I hope it'll be better. We, we certainly want to be good run the, running the B back, and, but we need, to be in a, we need to be good in all those phases, whether it's him carrying it, the quarterback, the slots, or we got to throw it out to the receivers. We, we've got to be productive. And, and uh, we were able to do that in the first two games and certainly not as much on Saturday. Uh, if I may, uh, from your opening statement, it sounded like, you were more optimistic following film review 
than one might expect. Is that true? Uh, we were more optimistic in what regard? After watching, after watching the film, it sounded, it sounded like you, you identified a lot more positives than the way you were feeling Saturday. Oh, there was there were positives. Uh, there were positives from Saturday, and I pointed those out to our team on Saturday the, the, after the game. Some of the positives. There were several. I mean, we had a we had a turnover for a touchdown. We had uh, a goal line stand. Um, you know, we 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 had two receivers that about made great catches the one on the sideline with with isaiah alston that uh he, he wasn't able to complete and then the the one that was thrown into the end zone to reek and donaldson he almost came down with that i mean you know, th those guys those are two young receivers that i think have a chance to be really good um you know we had some plays on the perimeter we we, we gained some yards we had some we had some penalties we had we had several penalties saturday uh, particularly on offense that set us back and you know, it's it's really hard to to get into first and 25 or second and 17 or whatever we were in and and turn the sticks it's hard for anybody to do but when we're at an offense that's accustomed to being in second and seven and not second and 17 with three more chances to run the ball for a first down you know that, that's difficult for us so there were there were good things, and you know the the play action pass where where we drug uh, the the guy across the, the the middle underneath, and we had the two high routes, and they had those covered. And I think probably if we if we're able to complete that, we we probably run that for a good ways and put ourselves in position. And there was another one where they they turned a guy, you know, scot free on on a on a play action route, and and we weren't able to to give our guy the protection long enough that he needed to complete the pass. And so, you know, there's things like that that were just just uh, really, really close to, to making a play. Uh, those certainly are positives. Those are negatives that we weren't able to get that done. But we were closer. And, uh, and had we made some of those plays, perhaps we could have been in position. But we just never did enough to get ourselves in position to, to be able to win the football game. Thanks, Coach. Have a good day, everybody.